Good morning and welcome your faces to another Bravo 2-2 Live. This, of course, is made possible by the Royal British Legion and our lovely overlords that is the Drive Project. A uh, special welcome to our new victims, sorry, members. Um, and if you don't know me, my name is Graham Lim. I've been a member of Bravo 2-2 for um, a few years and I've been involved in many projects in different countries. It's Belgium and back and done lots of other things. Um, today, today we're going to be in discussion. Uh, we're going to have a debate on what is art for. And this is going to be run by our very lovely art director, which is, it, is Al Johnson. And she will be with the lovely and very talented um, Alex Julian and the equally talented um, Gilly Gretton. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And over to you, Al. Lovely. Thank you, Graham. That's a very nice introduction, as always. Um, welcome to everyone. And it's, this is our first um, panel discussion. So we need you. Actually, we do really need you. Because what we need you to do is to, to comment on what's being said. Because there's been lots of opportunities to, um, to read your questions. Um, and to respond to them. Um, so I'm going to pose a question before we even begin, because I'm going to introduce you in a moment to Alex and to Gilly, who I hope you all have met before. But first of all, I want you to think about this, the question that I've kind of posed, for this, the tricky question I posed for this session, which is, what is art for? And that's what we're going to discuss today, what art is for. Um, and what I'd really like you to do is to be thinking about that sort of alongside everything that's being said and post your responses onto the chat line and then we can discuss them um, towards the end. But also, if you've got other questions or other responses, this is about you, not, not so much about questions, but about you kind of saying what you think, because none of this is set in stone. This is all about ideas. Um, so before we go any further, I'd like to introduce you to um, Alex Julian, who you may have met. Uh, she's done some wonderful uh, workshops for us. Um, the um, packaging workshop, uh, sculpture from packaging and a collage workshop. And to Gilly Gretton, who's also done some fantastic workshops about printmaking. So uh, the, the two of, I, I'm going to be the sort of... Um, the go-between, I suppose, and um, I'm going to pose questions and I'll, I'll ask some of your questions. But Gilly and Alex have both kind of worked out a kind of almost a statement about what they think art is for. So I'm going to ask Gilly first to present her statement. Uh, it's very short, so don't don't panic. Um, and uh, Gilly, tell us what you think art is for. All right. So what is art for? It's a huge question. To start with, is it for the maker or for the viewer? Of course, they're often the same people. In both cases, there are too many possible answers, but let's try. We'll start with the viewer. So someone comes up to you in, a, in an exhibition and says, but what's it for? And your answer will vary according to the exhibition, the installation, etc. But maybe there's some overlaps. Pleasure might be one, and will depend on the artist and the viewer, as will excitement, amusement, insight, nostalgia, instruction. Whatever form it comes in, art tends to take aspects of life and present them in new ways that provoke or invite a reaction. You might feel transported, challenged, impressed, annoyed, bored, thrilled, comforted, horrified. And what's art for for the artist? Communication, exploration, invention, rebellion, and again, communication. Lovely, thank you. That's, that's a real kind of um, really nice way of thinking about it because it, it incorporates a lot of ideas there. Lots, it's, it seems to be for a lot of things actually. Uh, Alex, how do you respond to that? Well, first of all, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to quickly add, I really like the question, what is art for? Because we tend to ask a different question, which is what does art mean? 
And I think they are very different questions. Um, and this question is quite an open one. And as Gilly's just demonstrated, it uh, takes us in lots of different directions. And the one I wanted to pick up on was this relationship between the artist and the viewer. And obviously for the artists, what art is for is to make something and to be engaged in ideas and materials and try and realize something that only exists in their head or in their imagination and put it into the world. And that may involve lots of experimentation and trial and error. And sometimes it might even involve abandoning an idea if, it, if it, you can't actually get it into the world. Um, so that's one kind of experience. And then you have the experience of the viewer, which is you. You know, how are you coming across that art? Where are you coming across it? And uh, what kind of mood are you in that day? And what sort of ideas are going on in your head? Or what kind of life experiences have you had that you're bringing to that artwork? And then you're trying to make a connection between what you think the artist might be trying to do and, and what you're thinking about. That can be a very complicated process. It's not easy. Um, and often we want to feel that art should be immediate and easy and we connect straight away, but it tends not to be like that. Um, we also have this, uh, as I said, the artist is doing the making and the viewer is doing the looking and the thinking, um, which takes time. And the viewer is also having the physical experience of standing in front of an artwork or inside an artwork. So that relationship is complicated. And the word I wanted to pick up on in Gilly's statement is this word communication, because the artist is trying to communicate something. But if we extend that word to conversation, then it becomes a more equal relationship. It's like a back and forth. And although the artist isn't standing there to have the conversation with, the artwork is. So if we think of it as a conversation, then we can think, well, what happens in a conversation? Imagine yourself standing in a social situation and uh, you're talking to someone maybe you've never met before and you're having a conversation with them. What's happening? Are you, are you bored? Are you provoked? Are you angry? Are you um, informed? Are you excited? Uh, there are so, so many elements that can happen there. Um, equally, there might be um, a tension or a disagreement or agreement. And exactly that is going on with you and an artwork. You're trying to navigate all of those things. So I'm going to say it's complicated what art is for. <laughs> I don't know that we're kind of getting down to this now. It's a very, it's lots of things, isn't it? Graham, what do you think art is for? So I'll make this shorter. Oh, I'll try. <laughs> um, so I, I think art is, is a little bit like uh, Facebook where a lot of people or other social media um everyone puts their own life on or well, a lot of people put things of their life on social media and i think artists do the same thing in whatever form that they, that they use whether it's painting or sculpture or whatever um and just like facebook not everyone wants to read it or see about it or or anything but there'll always be people who are really interested in it and will look and watch them get involved in, in, in art all along. So I think it's about show, showing what's going on in an artist's mind and putting that into whatever form it may be. That's a really interesting idea, isn't it? Because that's that really kind of um, connects with uh, what Alex and Gilly are saying about communication, about the conversation, isn't it? Mm. Uh, in a way, that's that's what you're doing on Facebook, isn't it? You're communicating yeah. something. Yeah. Fantastic. Have we got any questions from... Um, our, our viewers, our watchers, I was going to say, viewers. <laughs> well, I've, uh, well, I've got a couple of uh, shout outs. Uh, so to Paul, Sugar Free Steve, uh, Christine, Dean, uh, and everyone else who's joined us, welcome. Uh, and the question will we'll go along a little bit further and then we'll, okay. we'll get into all the questions. You, you froze there for a moment, Graham. Did I? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, very, very good face, though, when you froze. Oh God! <laughs> Only for a second. Uh, right. So what we're going to do um, is look at some some images, some paintings, and, and a sculpture. Uh, and first of all, we'll, we'll show the image. So let's let's have a look at um, the first painting. is called Convergence, and it's by Jackson Pollock. That should be image one. Should be on your screen now. Um, first of all, I'm going to ask Graham, and then I'm going to ask um, 
uh, Gilly, response to this uh, image, Graham? Well, I studied this a little bit last night and, and I was trying to get to uh, some answers. Uh, it's a very random art piece. Uh, so um, everything does look random, but what is the artist's skill? Because it really just, just look like random bits of paint. Okay, so let's let's go to Alex first. What, what, do, what do you think, Alex? Is it random? Well, I completely understand Graham's response and it's, it's actually a very common response. And perhaps um, it's interesting because I think it's one of those ways of responding to art that can sort of put, bring the shutters down and, and make you walk away. But actually it's a really good uh, kicking off point to say, well, okay, so clearly somebody thinks this has value, this very random looking painting. So therefore, is it random might be the next question. And uh, it might actually draw you in to look a bit harder and to actually try and imagine yourself making this painting. Um, because when you look at it, Graham, what does it look like the artist has done? I think it's, uh, I think it's portraying an emotion, definitely. What do you think he's, he's, how do you think he's actually made it just in really simple terms? Um, probably just splashing colour onto a canvas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's, he, his nickname was Jack the Dripper. Brilliant. And, uh, because that's exactly what he was doing. He was dripping paint and it can look very random. But in fact, the, the more you look at this, the more uh, controlled you see it is. And what he was actually doing was trying to progress what art can be because we were used to painting being, um, first of all, always made on a wall. He actually made it on a floor. But also um, we put a value on painting when we see that the brushwork is very controlled and it's made in a certain way uh, through certain traditions. And he was actually um, pushing the boundaries of that by using cans of paint with holes in them, sometimes brushes that were overloaded with paint and dripping. And so he's really pushing um, what we think of as a painting tradition and um, trying to pull us into this idea of a physical experience, not just uh, what we call a pictorial one, not just a sort of looking at a picture, but actually try and enter into his world a bit. What, what would it feel like to actually make this painting ourselves? What would that be like? Would we be able to do it? I think usually our first Im impulse is, yes, of course I could do that. Um, be interesting to have a go. Yeah, so something that's often said about Pollock's paintings is that, um, oh, a five-year-old could do that. But it'd be interesting to set a five-year-old the task and see if they, see if they actually yeah. could, wouldn't it? Uh, Gilly, um, what what do you reckon? Well, um, a, a lot of a lot of things that Alex said, but but I, you know when I look at it, um, I suppose I look as a painter, so I'm very much drawn to the the paint. Um, and I know he's not he wasn't using the kind of paints that I would use. He wasn't using uh, traditional oil paints. He was using something much closer to house paint. Um, so because he wanted to drip it, because if you want it to be fluid like that, um, tr the kind of oil paint you get in a tube doesn't work. So he had to go for something else. And that was part of, of his rebellion against tradition was to say, well, what about these other things? You don't have to use the same, same sort of materials. And, uh, and with the more I look at it, the more control I see, it's terribly difficult to do. It's, you know, give it to a five-year-old and you have a terrible mess. <laughs> <laughs> so getting what he did, he, he, he used a, um, a method of sort of running it down sticks and things like that so that it would go actually where he wanted, although he moved at high speed. So it's, it's sort of extraordinary to think of almost dancing with paint um, and coming out with something. The more you look at it, the more you see there's, there's very clear structure there. Um, and it isn't random at all. So it, it's carefully composed and it's composed in layers. It's very thick. So he's working on it and working on it and working on it until he gets it exactly the way he wants it. So it's... He's, he's um, I think also that, that there's this sense of the immersive. So he's, he's really, really big, 
And so when you look at it, mm. you um, are sort of immersed in this whole kind of experience of looking at the paintings. Yeah. Graham, have we got, I think we've got a couple of comments, haven't we? From yes, we have, yeah. So um, this ties in very well. Um, is it okay for the artist to purely um, be purely subjective or is it important to understand the artist's skill? Um, Alex, what do you think? I'm not quite sure what that question means. Do, do you, is do it you uh, purely subjective the, for the artist? I think, I mean, uh, I, I think when you're an artist... Sorry. Sorry, I was just thinking, uh, is it important to, un to understand the artist's skill? I think that's maybe the, the more interesting part of the question, actually. Mm. What do you think? Do we need I to think I don't think it's uh, a major issue. I think you come to you might come to that through looking or through asking questions. Mm. Um, I don't think it's the primary focus. I think the primary focus is how you connect to it. And um, if we took Pollock as an example, Gilly might connect as a painter initially by thinking about the paint and what paint can do and what it can't do and and as you said Gilly the kinds of paint that might work and this um idea of dancing I think which is beautiful you know that you're dancing as you're making a painting so you're thinking about that I might connect in a completely different way which is to do with the fact that um he's making it on a floor and then it ends up on a wall and it's quite crude when he makes it and then it gets on into a gallery and it becomes something else. So I think, you know, we come at, we come at art from our own experience and our own interests. So the, the purpose of our, well, this question about what art's for is, is in very much a relationship, isn't it? From, from what you both saying between the artist as the maker and the person who's looking at the, the image, that mm. it's not just, the artist is giving you something, but that you as a, as a viewer have to interpret or enter into it or decide, respond in some way. Uh, I think we've got another couple of questions, Graham. Yeah, we? yeah from, from our, our own uh, art student. Uh, Sally Ann thinks that the first image is therapeutic, following the lines and splatters. The use of colour seems angry or fiery, which is very true. And Christine thinks the image looks like. Um, he has troubled mind. And, and the last, if, if you don't mind, um, from Sally again, uh, did Pollock use paintings as representations? Um, Gilly, what do you think? Um, did he use it as representation? Um, I would say he didn't. It's, it's not quite that. Um, it could represent, it, it, it represents in a sense, the movement of his arm. So you're actually following his arm in that sense. It does, but but he isn't. It's not a picture of something. Yeah, it's not representational. Not is representational. It? Yeah. Uh, so I think, it, I think there's a good. There, there is a you know potential for the dis, a discussion about his um, uh, state of mind though, because uh, Christine, who says the image looks like he's got a troubled mind, he. I um, mean, we we know that he was quite troubled but whether yeah. this is represent these paintings are representing that or not we don't know it, it's it, it, interesting isn't it we always i think we always read into images um the information that we have about the artist so if you look I, at I, God, the best troubled example, mind you you kind of know that he was a bit troubled and sorry what did you say graham i'm the best artist always troubled minded well yes i think so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Um, shall we go on to the next image, which is, um, I, th I think we might go to image, I'm just looking at the time. We'll, we'll go to image three, which is um, uh, by a sculptor called David Smith. Um, and it's, it's Hudson River Landscape. So this is image three. Um, and um, this is, I, I, well, I, sh I shouldn't say this, but this is one of my favorite works. <laughs> So you can't be mean about it. Graham, what do you reckon about this? Um, well, I don't really... Why did he make it out of metal? Why didn't he just draw it? Yeah, interesting. Uh, Gilly, what do you think? Well, why did he make it out of metal? Um, partly because with, with David Smith, you get a feeling he absolutely loved metal. He loved working with it. And that's something... We haven't really talked about that. 
that um, artists off well tend to work in a medium that they enjoy physically. They love it, um, and it's it's not a it, it's not entirely objective. You you have a uh, a feel for that material, and um, with David Smith, it's it's clearly metal, and he was using it in a revolutionary way. Nobody had used it this way before. Um, it, it was, I mean, it, Al's the one who knows much more about sculpture than I do. But it, metal tended to be cast. You made you made the sculpture out of something else, and it was cast in metal. Whereas uh, David Smith uses it as if he's using paint, or he's he's uh he's drawing it but he's drawing it with the with with steel and that's a, a absolutely extraordinary so the the materials are terribly important with him um and uh and why do it um i think that that's that's the question the answer i can give you is is, is that it, it's what he used he could he did draw um but uh, he's, he's he talks about drawing in space, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, so in, in the ways Graham's saying it's a drawing, it's absolutely right. It is a drawing, but it's a three-dimensional one, I suppose. Um, Alex, what do you think? Well, just to add on to um, that question uh, and, and the comments that have been made, the fact that it is a drawing in space obviously means that you can walk around it. Mm. So you experience it very differently from, from a drawing in a frame on a wall. And I think it raises the other issue that, that drawing and sculpture aren't necessarily separate elements. And for this artist particularly, um, that we tend, when we see works in galleries, we tend to think they have just come, they've kind of been born complete from the artist's mind. So there it is, it's all in the artist's mind and then they go away and make it. That generally doesn't happen. <laughs> and uh, what tends, to happen more often than not is an artist will turn to a sketchbook before anything or back of an envelope or whatever, but they will try out trial and error. Uh, and, and it's a very rapid way working quickly in pencil. Does this work? Does that work? I'm going to discard that idea. This idea is starting to look more interesting or I can evolve it. So, so drawing and sculpture can be very entwined. Drawing and painting can be very entwined as well. Not, it's not always the case, but it's often the case. It's interesting, actually, because David Smith trained as a welder um, and he was he's one of the first artists to use welding as an art form because that was engineering, really. And one of the things you do with welding is, is you draw, if you need a shape, if you're making a gate or something and you need to have two the same, you need to make sure you, you keep the pattern. And so uh, welders draw on the, on the floor in the workshops with chalk, and then you work your material around the chalk mark on the floor. Uh, and that's exactly the way David Smith made Hudson River landscape. Graham, I'm just wonder, can you see anything figurative in this piece? Can you see anything there? If, if we have the image back up again, um, anything? Yeah, I mean, the, I think the image is, is it's just in your own mind, whatever. I see fish, I see lots of things, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> However, th there's a couple of questions on it. Okay. Uh, Sugar Free Steve thinks it's harsh uh, with a broken industrial feel, which I think is very true. Yeah. And Christine says, uh, sorry, but can't work this one out, would be my choice. Yeah, I, uh, David Smith's, uh, uh, I think, I think his, uh, I think actually it's true of all sculpture. You really need to see it in the flesh, you know. Um, it's hard to, to, to see a sculpture because you're only seeing it one, one view of it. And as Alex said, you, you know, you walk around sculpture. Um, and this is quite big and it's quite often um lit really well so you 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 can you get shadows from it and yeah but i i understand it's it's hard it is it is quite hard to to kind of on on a flat image to to see um to see what you're looking at got any other any other comments uh, uh thinks it's it's very masculine oh really that's interesting i wonder why that is what do you think i wonder if that's to do with um it being metal i think it's because it's industrial and, and industrial uh, materials yeah yeah 
yeah, David Smith had a, a period. He was he was allowed uh, the use of a. In it, he went to Italy and he had three weeks to make sculpture, and he made about eighty pieces of sculpture because he was let loose in a in an old foundry. He used all the bits, so um, this is very masculine. Yeah, imagine having three weeks to be able to make a sculpture. Mm, imagine, imagine. <laughs> You can do that, Graham. Uh, we've all done that, haven't we? Uh, right, let's go on. So <laughs> we've got just a couple of minutes. Uh, we've got a, um, a Cara Walker piece. So this is um, image two. Um, and this is called Grub for Sharks. Uh, who spoke that? Alex, tell us about tell us about this. Oh, actually, let's, so let me ask Graham first. Um, what was your response to this one, Graham? Oh, when I saw it, I thought it looked like a story. But I didn't understand the story. That's an interesting um, response, actually. Alex, tell us, tell us about. I think it. that's uh, it's an interesting point, Graham, because it it has that slight feeling of a book illustration about it, and you feel that perhaps you should be looking at it from left to right. But um, as you can see from the image, it's it's actually taking up part of a room, so it's quite immersive. It's on a it's on a big scale, so you the figures are almost as big as you are, so you you almost become part of that story. So there's this definite immersive quality to it, which is interesting. So the the artist is trying to really pull you into that story, whatever it is, and um, this artist makes a lot of work about her own history, if you like. Uh, and and the immensity of that history but she uses a lot of humor and uh, as you can see from the image they're, they're very clear images you can kind of take sections of them as well as looking at the entirety of them so you you have all these options uh, and because you choose where you stand within the image you're building different relationships with that image all the time so it's it's definitely um, very direct and very physical, and it might take a bit of time to try and unpick what you think the story is. But I think there's another question here, which is: is it is it important to the artist that you know what the story is? So I'm just going to throw that one out. <laughs> um, Gilly. We'll um, run, we'll run almost at, at time, so... Um, okay, well, just, just very, very quickly. Um, I remember when I first saw work by by her and by Kara Walker, and I, I was completely blown away by the fact that she was using a very old um, technique, which is cut paper. The It's all cut out of black paper. And it was a technique that was used for small... Um, things like very small um, portraits of people and, uh, and, and small, delicate, pretty uh, illustration for books. And she's taken it and it's, it's as if she's saying, okay, um, I'm going to use this in a completely different way, but you'll still be aware of, of the tremendous skill involved in cutting this paper out. Um, and uh, you're sort of aware of the, of the, disconnect between the, the the material she's using the way she's doing it and the kind of story that she's sort of showing you it's not a story it's it's as if you're i don't know the what's the feeling observing her memories or her ideas of of her past or her um where she comes from um and she gives you lots of material for thinking about it but you get to do the thinking she's not telling you what to think Really, it's um, is, she, is she using this material to sort of um, in an, un, an unexpected way? Do you think completely unexpected, totally, totally different from what it would have been used for initially? Um, that's that's what I'm trying to trying to get at. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just looking at the clock, thinking, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> right. Completely different from the initial, the original way of using it. Um, Really, a bit like David Smith, completely different from the original use of welded metal. Yeah, um, I think we could make some really um, good kind of connections. All the all the Ameri artists we have looked at actually are American, which is completely coincidental. Uh, just just artists we thought would would be interesting um, to see. Graham, have we got any comments? I can see there's a quite a long comment from 
sugar-free steam? Well, actually, this is this is about what uh, we think art is for. Do you, do you want me to? Well, uh, we can go on to that um, sure. in just a tick. Have we got any other comments? Just generally. Um, no, it, it's all about the, li the list now of what is art, okay. art is for. Right. So very good. I'm very impressed that you've um, <laughs> you've got you've remembered what I asked you at the beginning which is good. So uh, my question, uh, which um, thank you very much, Alex and um, Gilly, for, for really exploring it. It's been, been really interesting. I asked you at the beginning uh, what art is for, um, and some, some of you have come back with, with responses. So, Graham, can you tell us some of the responses? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, Luke Delahunty, surely there is no one answer to that question. Art is multifaced. Sorry, multi yeah. That word. <laughs> um, Dean Williams, art to me is a therapeutic place uh, for my mind. Lovely. Sally Ann, art saved my life, literally. Mm -hmm. uh, Christine. Art more than that, can you? <laughs> no, not really. Uh, and she's a very good artist as well. She um, is. Christine Thomas, to me, art is to stretch your imagination. Uh, Sugar Free Steve has wrote a book on this. Uh, art, <laughs> art is a challenging environment. Uh, it should come from the heart. It should cause us to think and feel hidden. Emotions we have, sorry, uh, hidden emotions we have never ex experienced before. It should cause us to continually question everything. It is a true expression of love and requires immersion immense uh, effort on like reading this uh, it is the it is the driven spine with it's us all sorry spine. Spark in <laughs> us, with us um in creation itself sorry that, that went extraordinary. on Actually, I'm well, just, I'm very I'm, true you, steve Graham, I, don't want, I don't want to insult you i'm just going to read it again yes please do properly it's very it is hard to read it you know going straight off but it's such a nice thing so art is a challenging environment. It should come from our hearts. It should cause us to think and feel hidden emotions we've never experienced before. It should cause us to continually question everything. It's a true expression of love and requires immense effort. It is the divine spark within us, creation itself. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think we should stop there. <laughs> yeah. What a great note to end on. Amazing. That's, that's fantastic. Sugar free Steve, well done. And uh, all those all those comments were fantastic. Um, you uh, Graham missed <laughs> missed out Paul's pause, which was break up the monotonous days. I would do apologize, Paul. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> which I think is a, also a, a, you know, we all feel like that sometimes. Um, thank you so much, uh, Alex and, and Gilly. It was fantastic um, to have you explore this. What is it actually an extremely difficult question? And there aren't any right answers. And all, all the answers you've come up with are right answers. Everything we've said is, is right because it's subjective. It is about who you are and where you come from. So thank you very, very much for, for answering the, a difficult question. Thank you, Graham, for um, reading out the questions and for answering questions yourself. That's, well, I try to. You rose to the occasion, which is great. Um, I'm thank you also for watching. Um, and uh, I'll say goodbye now and, and I'll just let uh, Alex and Gilly say goodbye as well. Do you want to say Bye. goodbye? Bye. <laughs> um, and I'll hand you back to Graham for news of next week. Thank you. Thank you. I need today's news. No. So next week, uh, we have something quite uh, something really special. Uh, acting to the camera. <laughs> Uh, and that is with, with uh, Bill Britton and our very own Scott Yarrington. Uh, and on Thursday, our very own Al Johnson, who you may know from such things as a minute ago. Um, <laughs> she is on a third of the Masterpiece series. This will focus on, and I'll pronounce this correctly, Hock Size, the Great Wave of Kanegawa. Um, and so that'd be, that'd be wonderful. And if you would, as always, like and subscribe, and please, please fill in those feedback forms. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>